Home is not a place, but a moment. Sarah Dessen. Home is a teddy bear, but only a certain teddy bear at a certain time. John Green. Humans are, without question, the most inspiring and the most terrifying of Earth's creatures. We are powerful enough to hunt bears to the point where they themselves are not feared, but their possible extinction is. I went to Northwest Florida State College for my associates, and Florida black bears, smaller than their western cousins though they may be, are still a little alarming to see coming over the quiet woodwork of Northwest Florida. Still, they were never cause for great alarm, curiosity maybe, wariness certainly, but not outright fear. That's not where my fear tends to come from. In Teddy Bears, John Green talks about the first moment where he longed for the years gone by. He was 10, and his teddy bear that offered him no judgment, only a quiet acceptance and tranquil peace in the midst of chaos, didn't work the way it used to. He thought he could never be a kid again. Not really. I have a moment like this, centered around a toaster, of all things. I was eight, so I suppose I have John beat in the being too young to grapple with our mortality business. The date, and I am not making this up, was April the 22nd, 2005. I was going to turn nine in a few days. And staring at that toaster, waiting the minute or so it was going to take for my toast to be ready, as I waited, I remember thinking, I'm only eight once. For everything I can do, I can't be eight again. And I remember crying. Eight was such a pleasant number. Nine seemed so old, so weird, so on the verge of something I did not want. To grow, to accept responsibility, to carry that weight, I felt like I had plenty already. Humans have a responsibility to not just Earth's creatures, but to ourselves, the most powerful of said creatures. To not just make the world a better place, but to also make it better for us and to seek a balance between the two. It is a stewardship we stumbled into through seeking progress. The origin of teddy bears, of Roosevelt supposedly sparing one that had already been beaten, is a nice, if incomplete way of viewing history. The mighty bear has become, like so many creatures on Earth, dependent on us. Their survival is contingent on our wisdom and compassion, just as that bear in Mississippi needed Roosevelt to be kind. Even though, as John notes, Roosevelt did not really spare that bear. He had a man with him slit its throat to put it out of its misery. I also grieve for the not complete story we are told of teddy bears as I compare the sales figures of teddy bears to the percentage of bears left alive in Mississippi today, and I worry that we have so far yet to go in as humanity, accepting and making the most of the stewardship we have stumbled into, making the most of where we are now, not where we were or where we might go. But now that we are here, in this moment, I'm determined to meet that responsibility, to make the most of being in this age or being part of the Anthropocene. John seems to be too. I also give the teddy bear Two and a half stars.